and please walk with me as I open your eyes by the Spirit to the real secret of maturity. I say this with all humility. I do not know everything. I'm a student in the Spirit myself, learning every day. But there are some things by the privilege of God's grace we have been shown by mercy. We are called stewards of the mysteries. Paul said, you know of the dispensation of grace that was given to me. Are we together? Yes. He articulated his apostleship in Ephesians chapter 3. How that he made known this mystery unto me. And the mystery was given to him to the end that all men will see. Verse 9, Ephesians 3 and verse 9. The grace that was given to him to first understand the mysteries of the kingdom and then to make all men see. There is a grace that does not just teach you this truth, but it empowers you to make all men see. Number one, the first secret, the first pathway, the first spiritual requirement for any individual to become a person of growth, stature, maturity, and power, and please lend me your attention, is that you must submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. Submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. A systemic structure of prayer. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way prayer the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men 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 ought always to pray and not to faint show me an individual now saved and is guided by proper mentorship to habitually, habitually, systemically submit yourself to prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, when you read verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Say that after me. The hour of prayer. There was a ritual that was connected to their prayer life. The hour of prayer. It was not just prayer when they remembered to pray. Are we together? What gives value to your prayer life is the discipline of consistency. What gives value to your prayer life is the discipline of consistency. Write that down. The discipline of consistency. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication, but you obtain that enabling grace and you engage it through discipline. You can pray yourself to a more superior version. You can pray yourself to a more powerful version. You can pray yourself to a more enlightened version. Jesus prayed. The apostles prayed. The early church prayed, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves continually. Canada, hear me. You are as powerful as your prayer life you are as powerful not pretentious religious prayer prayer that produces power in the spirit you are as powerful as your prayer life parents teach your children to pray not by compulsion teach them by leading the way in prayer don't tell people to pray and then step back you see there is a grace that follows a prayerful believer. That grace is perceivable even by an unbeliever. You can perceive a healthy prayer life. Hallelujah. You must obtain grace to pray. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. 
an attack on your prayer life is an, a, is an attack on God's purposes as committed to you. Someone shout, I will pray. Let the devil hear you say, I will pray. Jesus mandated that the disciples pray. He prayed himself. Can you imagine? As the son of God, he still prayed. You must obtain grace to pray. We're not doing an elaborate discussion on prayer. I've done several teachings on prayer. Please go to Koinonia Global and get the teachings. I have taught on effective prayer dynamics. There's been series and series on prayer. Teach us to pray. It's a series you would want to listen to. The disciples came and met Jesus and said, teach us to pray. Their issue was not prayerlessness. It was inefficiency in prayer. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus began to teach them to pray. Hallelujah. A man can be taught to pray. You don't just learn how to pray by praying alone. You are taught. You can pray amiss by praying. But you pray effectively when you are mentored to pray. You are taught to pray. Effective prayer. But let me say this about prayer. James was talking about prayer and he said, The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous. Still have that in your Bible? Availed much. You know what that meant? He was trying to teach us that... Prayer has to be fervent and has to be effectual to produce power. Now, fervent meant that your heart would have to be involved. Are we together? Your heart, your emotions must be involved in your prayer. You cannot be praying seriously while making a call, browsing, praying one minute and then checking who is liking my page, who is liking my post. Uh, that is careless prayer that does not produce power. If your prayer does not touch you, it will not touch heaven. Are we together? You must set yourself to pray. Set yourself to pray. Give it dedicated attention. Number two, he says prayer must be effectual. What makes prayer effectual is the degree to which the will of God is captured in your prayer. Please listen. What makes prayer effectual is not the quality, the linguistic prowess. How articulate you can speak so well yet amiss. What makes prayer effectual is the degree to which the will of God is captured in that prayer. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And the will of God is captured in his word. Are we together? Word-based, scripture-compliant prayer is effectual prayer. A lot of believers pray emotional prayers full of sentiment and error. And just because you say amen at the end of the prayer does not mean you prayed. What makes your prayer powerful is that number one, your heart has to be involved and number two, you must pray according to the will of God. The will of God is captured in his word. But you see, pragmatically speaking, there are times where you may have unique events in your life and you may not directly have a scripture as at yet. For instance, it's not written in the Bible whether you should be in Calgary or you should be in Toronto or you should be in Canada or leave Canada. You may not find that in scripture. This is where the prayer language of the Spirit comes. When you pray in the Spirit, you don't stop till the will of God becomes clear. Praying in the Spirit is not just for edification. It's a system that transports the will of God from the heart of the Father until it gets to your consciousness. Is someone learning now? But when it gets to your consciousness, now you begin to engage by the Word. Mark 11, 23, 24. What things soever ye desire, the Bible says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Thou shalt have them. There are many assignments to prayer. I'm tempted to just stretch a bit. But let me pick one. The major assignment of prayer is for your edification. Please listen. 
for most believers, our prayer is just full of prayer requests, needs. So we say something like, Father, thank you. I'm here again. And then we read out the lists. My mortgage, my health, and th there's nothing wrong with that. But the primary assignment of prayer is as a tool for your growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. And as he prayed, the Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. You pray for growth. You pray for transformation. A matured believer gets to a point where you shelve your prayer requests and get into the place of prayer. Because like you may have heard me say, many of the things you write as requests are growth dependent. Many of the things you expect God to answer are growth dependent. An heir, for as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave. There are things that God by his mercy will never give you as answer to prayer because you do not have the capacity to have it. Did you know that in the place of growth, you will find out that many requests naturally gravitate towards you? Most believers are asking for what they do not have capacity to receive. Father, give me 10 million Canadian dollars. Your word says whatever I ask. You are right. But God knows that he will lose you when that happens. Not because you are a bad person. You have not been cultured to even understand the purpose of the blessings. So he will rather you grow. As you grow, you will find the answers following you per growth, per level. Are we together? Yes. Lord, I'm trusting you for an anointing. Give me a double portion of Renard Bonke's anointing. Then add T.L. Osborne's and then add everyone. So at least you list five or six generals and ask for double portions of the anointing. Can you stand the attack that comes with that anointing? Because if you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming after you. There are attacks that don't follow men. They follow mantles. So whatever mantle you carry, you must be equipped to survive the attack that comes. You don't just blindly pray. And, and you know sometimes, quite honestly, sometimes people just kneel down and say, Apostle, I know you are still alive, but I want a double portion of your anointing. And I can lay my hands on them and between me and God, I know nothing really. Just so that they, they can go rejoicing. But it doesn't work like that, my dear people. There are rules of engagement. Are we learning? Yeah. Growth. So submit yourself to pray from today. Make it a culture. Let me challenge every family here. Create a prayer system within your house. Let every visitor come to your home finding a prayer system. Else they will bring their gods to your home. Are we together? If you come to my house, you have to pray like I pray. If you're not interested, stay somewhere. But if you, you are under my care, even if it's for a day, you have to subscribe to the modus operandi that governs my house. As for me and my house, wake up and pray. Conquer slumber. Wake up and pray. Love your destiny enough to wake up and pray. Shake up sleep and slumber. You wake up in the night, Lord, I give you praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Canada, you hear my voice. You see, let me tell you this. The realm of the spirit has a record system. And you believe me, I'm not exaggerating. If there is no track record of your burning the incense of prayer, you can't stand before principalities and say, give way. It will be an unfamiliar voice. Jesus, I know, they will tell you. Paul, I know, but who are you? There is no track record in the spirit. There is no sowing to the spirit. Why do you want a harvest? It's fraud to want a harvest when there's no seed sown. Pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Men of God, pray. Mothers, pray. Do you know if we spend half the time we use complaining, gossiping, grumbling, 
and telling people things about our lives who do not have the power to create any change, you go to God in prayer. Stretch there until a birthing happens. Stretch there until a birthing happens. Father, you have given me this ministry. You have given me this vision in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because the wisdom for this vision comes in the name of Jesus and you pray every day. One day becomes one week, becomes one month, becomes years. It becomes a habit until you begin to reap the harvest from an effective prayer life. Let me pray for someone. Every attack on your prayer life, every attack on your prayer life, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that spirit that has which haunted your prayer life, that has drained out of your life the desire to pray and to pray consistently. Here at this conference, I declare a revival. I declare a revival, a reignition to your prayer fire, a reignition to your prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As ministers of the gospel, we are given the mandate to pray and intercede for those who are under our care. But we must train those under our care to learn to stand strong and pray. The more people learn to pray, the more they will give pastors rest. There are, there are many pastors who cannot sleep because members sometimes, with all due respect, get very lazy and they just transfer by way of text a long list of prayer requests while they sleep. No. Believers must be taught to be responsible. Are we together? The more we teach believers, we take away the tendencies for, for being idolized. Let the people learn how to encounter Jesus. We will be there helping, but they should learn his presence. They should learn to pray. If you say, Apostle, pray for me, I will pray for you. But you will be praying while I pray for you. You have nothing to lose praying while I pray for you. Are we together? Teach your children to pray. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that a time will never come in Canada where prayer becomes, um, where laws will be passed that hinder prayer. Shout amen, oh. In the name of Jesus Christ. We love your government and we come in peace, but we also come establishing the purposes of God. There should never be a generation in Canada that fights prayer. When you fight prayer, you have fought the, the potential for creating changes in the name of Jesus Christ. So prayer is the first secret that helps men to transition to become people of power. I can tell you sincerely, I do not know anyone who has submitted himself to the prayer ministry genuinely non-pretentiously are we together who has not attained maturity and power in the spirit among the many things that prayer does is to sharpen your discernment thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it and you find rest for your soul apostle i'm a businessman do i need prayer surprisingly even more than a preacher do you know why because if a preacher preaches a bad sermon, he forgives himself and is ready next week. But when you lose a million dollars because of carelessness, you will get it back, but it will not be that easy. The preacher has a chance to get back again, revisit his notes. He can even get back to the congregation and say, sorry, I gave you a wrong scripture, you correct it. But that is not easily done as a businessman. When you lose, you can lose an opportunity that will take five years to return back. You need more discernment. Are we together? Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. An opportunity was here and I did not discern. A great door and an effectual was opened, but I was blind. Did not know that it was a, a safe passage into a new season. One more time, shout, I will pray. So prayer, effective prayer, 
is the first strategy. Ready for number two? The second strategy that is responsible for maturity and stature in the spirit is that you must submit to the ministry of the word. As simple as this sounds, just lend me your attention for explanation. The ministry of the word. You must submit to the ministry of the word. Write this down. Spiritual maturity is knowledge dependent. Spiritual maturity, attaining spiritual maturity at any level is knowledge dependent. I shared a scripture yesterday. Let's go back to that scripture. Acts 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. Able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Maturity is knowledge dependent. Dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge. If you lack sufficient knowledge, and when I talk about knowledge, I mean high level spiritual illumination. High level spiritual illumination. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 is a scripture that has challenged me for years. It still does. Read it with me, please. One, two, go. Oh, come on, Canada. Let's try again. One, two, go. Uh huh. As he ought to know, as he ought to know, there is a standard, non negotiable spiritual standard. The authority and dominion that you command and exert upon the cosmos depends on the level of illumination that you have. Please look at me. What do you know about prayer? What do you know or not know about Satan? What do you know about favor? What do you know about growth? What do you know about restoration? What do you know about relationships? What do you know about building things that last? What do you know about spiritual warfare? What do you know about the ministry of angels? What do you know about the Holy Spirit? What do you know about God? What do you know about yourself? These are the bodies of truth that you stand upon to gain command in life and destiny. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that most believers are in ignorance. They know a little about prayer. They've heard something, one or two about angels. They know something about confessing the word. They hope it works. They know something about giving. They are not exactly sure of it. They know something about fasting. They fast occasionally, grudgingly so. They know something about relationships. And so we have, we have very scattered knowledge that is not coordinated to produce victory. Your knowledge must be methodical. Your illumination must be high enough. John 1, 5, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. If I ask an individual now, anybody at all, to put on your phone light, do you know that the light that comes from your phone is light, but not light enough to illuminate this beautiful auditorium? So it is light, but it is not light enough. If all of us were to depend on that light alone, we'd be in trouble. This is how many believers run their lives. They have little light. Little light. And with it, they dare the devil. And they make all kinds of audacious statements and spend the remaining part of their life paying the price. Dominion is knowledge dependent. Victory is knowledge dependent. Authority in the kingdom the administration of it is knowledge dependent. I want to show you something now that I pray would bless you. There are six fundamental spiritual truths that every believer must know. If you do not know this, you cannot rise to your prophetic destiny and you will not amount to much as far as being a witness is concerned. Six of them. 
I want to give it to you. Be at liberty to teach your members, dear pastors. Be at liberty to share this in your prayer groups. Six fundamental bodies of spiritual truth that any believer who wants to attain unto maturity, any believer who wants to command power in the spirit and command power within the cosmos, you cannot be in ignorance of these six dimensions of truth and excel. Are you ready to write? Pray in the spirit for one minute. Thank you, Jesus. Sani palasho brandi gabarasu priest. Oh, your season has come. Oh, your season has come. Oh. My hell has come. Oh, hallelujah. This truth you are about to hear came as a result of my own personal study. I've been on a project of putting truths together as a contribution to the body of Christ, taking away the haziness around the subject of spiritual growth. Because for as long as our strategies become methodical, we will have more believers attain unto maturity. Are we together? So that we do not just have topics scattered and then the believers are at liberty to choose whatever they want. And so, um, I've been able to put together by the Spirit of God six fundamental bodies of truth no believer will rise and be a witness, be a lampstand, be a light without the knowledge of this. Write them down. Number one, the first foundational truth you must have to command dominion to be a mature believer with stature is that you must know God and Jesus Christ, his son. Write that down. The first foundational body of truth you must have is the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ his son John 17 and verse 3 this is life eternal the Bible says that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent in all your knowings if you do not know God you will not amount to much Daniel 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people not everyone, but the people that do know their God. It says they shall be strong capacity and they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not write on exploits. Do exploits. The God you encounter is the God you reveal to your world. The God you encounter is the God you reveal to your world. If you encounter a supposedly weak, confused, disoriented God, you will sell that confusion to your world and misrepresent God while you do that. The quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter. Let me say that again. The quality of your witness as a believer, the quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter. One last time. The quality of your witness depends on the certainty of your encounter. But I know whom I am believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. You must know God. And you must know Jesus Christ his son. Because life, situations and circumstances will ask you who sent you. Who sent you? We have come here in the name of the Lord. And please make no mistakes about it. As we're planning this conference, Satan was also planning. It would be a joke to believe that he, being aware that thousands of people will be gathered here to be healed, saved, and delivered, and then he would fold his hands. But thanks be to God, who causes us always to triumph. When the believers stand victorious, 
it is not because satan was not aware of their presence is because the light can shine in the midst of darkness are we together now the awareness of god kills fear when you know who sent you fear dies take time to know god before you start the assignment he gives you take time to know god i overcame hallelujah i overcame hallelujah listen believers you want to become an overcomer as a preacher any land is harsh and will remain harsh depending on who backs you canada can be a nightmare with all due respect to anyone and everyone except that when you become when god holds you when god backs you you can run through a troop you can leap over a wall do you listen there is no land that is welcoming by default there are demons in every land demons in every nation principalities there are enemies of the cross everywhere it is your knowledge of god and the confidence derived from that knowledge that defines your reality are we together yes you must know god pay the price to know god Please get my teaching knowing God accurately. I have done a teaching on that. I'm not going to go into it. But God, as great and mighty as he is, he wants to be known. And he's already defined a pathway to knowing him. Make reference to that teaching, knowing God accurately. Number two, the second fundamental body of truth you must know as a believer is that you must know yourself, who you are in Christ. This may sound basic and elementary, but you will be surprised how you'll be pegged in life and destiny if you do not know yourself in light of who Christ is. Second fundamental knowledge that brings victory, command, dominion, that helps you to be an effective witness. You must know who you are in Christ. You must know who you are in Christ. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, I believe, it says we are a chosen generation. I like this. Chosen. A royal priesthood. He's describing Joshua Selman. A holy nation. A peculiar people with a mandate to show forth the praises. Is the word doxazo. To show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's important to know who you are in light of who Christ is. You already know where you came from and all the nasty stories that follow your background. But do you know where you are now part of? That you are part of a new family and it's important you are aware of your new identity in Christ. Hallelujah. It's true that the Bible says I am a joint heir, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Christ. He is the vine, but I am the branch. Inseparable. His victory is my victory. I may not be all good by myself, having the energy to produce results, but not when I am joined with him. The Bible says we've been raised up with Christ. We've been made to sit together. Someone say together. I can fail alone, guarantee. But me and Jesus cannot fail together. No. We are a combo that does not fail. Do you believe this? The Bible says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Your identity in Christ. The Bible calls you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you've been given the mandate. You, you are God's choicest creation exalted above every other creation you are called man it's not an insult it's a description of a kind of spirit the only spirit that has authorization to command dominion upon the earth is called man hallelujah exalted 
anointed that my body can host the Holy Spirit. My God, when you are looking for where he is, find me. Find me. When you're looking for where his wisdom resides, I look for you. You're looking for where his favor speaks. You see that now? It's important. Listen, the knowledge of your identity in Christ brings healing. It can bring healing to your past. It can bring healing to whatever it is. Maybe perhaps you came from a family where no one has amounted to anything. Now, when you come into Christ, it's going to take a while. But you have to allow the word of God to culture yourself. There are things I can never believe about myself. No. No. Many of you have heard me say this humorously. If God is to bless 10 people here, I'll start praying for the remaining 9 people. Because one space is already gone. His jealousy defends me that much. His, his love has done something to me. I am God's investment. Think about it for one moment. I am God's investment. Hmm. He's invested his life, his jealousy, his attention. Whatever troubles me, God cannot ignore. He will come and find out what is making my son cry. I don't know how you do your business between you and him, but this is, I'm, I'm telling you what happens between me and God. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. God can reprove a nation for the person he loves. If you think love is not that powerful, ask Ahasuerus why her man died. Her man was his friend, but not after offending Esther. Are we together? This is how much he loves me. You must carry this mentality. Believers, hear me. Carry this mentality. Canada, listen to me. You are not weak. You only call yourself weak. If he calls you strong, call yourself strong. If he calls you victorious, let the redeemed of the Lord, help me, say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the victorious of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry his presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Is it in your Bible that a thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right side, that none shall hurt you with your eyes, shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked? It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? hallelujah this is who you are you are a light he calls you salt he calls you light don't call yourself darkness change your perception about yourself it doesn't matter how you feel stay on what he's called you meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them the bible says that you're profiting when god sends me by my strength i am not able but with jesus i can run through a troop i can leap over a wall listen when you believe this you will do big things for god in canada no excuses ordinary men empowered by a mighty God ordinary men drawn to the realm of dominion by their partnership with a mighty God 
So you look ordinary and you remain ordinary, but your results will only be godlike, godlike and extraordinary. Predictable dominion, repeatable again and again. Because the one who stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one, he is consistent, full of integrity and power. Listen, the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. He says, Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear. There is a formation happening. But listen, don't call yourself what God has not called you. And this is not just some Pentecostal garbage. No, no, no. It is how the economy of heaven runs. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Look at yourself in the mirror when you get back home and say, in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. My heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. Preachers, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. When I write, I write and rewrite. I write and rewrite. I write and rewrite over destinies. I write and rewrite. Hallelujah. Don't call yourself ordinary. No, you are not. You feel ordinary, but there is an ability. It says, I can do all things, Philippians 4.13, through Christ. Through Christ. It would have been an arrogant statement, except that you've introduced Christ. Through Christ. I can build that business through Christ. I can buy that house by December through Christ. If you do not believe in yourself in light of who Christ is, the nations will not believe you. Their confidence comes as an overflow of your confidence in yourself in light of who Christ is. Don't go and hang yourself. You are too valuable. Don't commit suicide. No. You are bringing minus one to God's army. And run away from naysayers who have mastered the art of frustrating your journey to manifestation. They see you and, ah, you mean you are in church? You? Love them with the love of Jesus and get away from them. They are not healthy for your growth. Did you hear me? Love them with the love of Jesus and get away from them. Get away from wrong social media content that deflates after praying and studying the Bible. You sit down and hear one nasty story and at the end of it, you don't feel powerful again. No. There is nothing God tells me to do that I cannot do in Christ. My confidence is not in my ability. Our sufficiency, the Bible declares, is not in ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers. Say, I am well able. Let that be your last declaration for now. Say, I am well able. I am well able to preach. I am well able to do business. I am well able to raise my kids. I may be a single mom, but in the name of Jesus, I am well able. I may be a young man, an orphan. In the name of Jesus, I am well able. I am well able. By you, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. Please be seated. Fundamental truth number three. Number one, you must have the knowledge of God and Jesus' his son. Number two, you must know who you are in light of who Christ is. Are you ready for number three? Number three, you must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program. You must know your place in destiny and in God's prophetic program. Hebrews 10 and 7. I come in the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will O oh God I come in the volume of the book it was written about me to do your will O oh God 
I will do your will, do your will, do your will, O oh God. I will do your will, do your will, do your will, O oh God. Lo, I come. Someone, you need to tell Canada this. Lo, I come. Don't ignore my presence. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is already written of me to do your will. Listen to me. You are not just a number you count. You are part of God's prophetic program. Are we together? Act as if the program of God depends on you because it does. Your contribution is part of the build up for this great army. Don't admire others at the detriment of your own call. There is a unique place for you in God's program. It doesn't matter how many pastors are in Canada. If God called you, there is a place for you. It doesn't matter how many business people are in Canada. If God called you, there is a place for you. Did you hear that? It doesn't matter how many psalmists, how many prophetic worshippers. If God has called you, there is a place for you. Here's what Philemon 1 and verse 6 says. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. There are things God has given you. That voice is not for waste. The wisdom is not for waste. Something happens to you when you know that you count as far as God's prophetic program is concerned. Shout it one last time, but do so with confidence. Say, I count. One more time, say, I count. Yes, sir. This conference has happened not just because of the presence of Jesus, not just because of Joshua Selman, not because of Pastor Nathaniel Bassi alone. This conference has happened because of you. One more time, say, I count. I count. Don't let no devil lie to you. They call you a black sheep. Call yourself a, well, what do you call yourself now? Because a white sheep can still fail. Call yourself a sheep that is led. I think that's the one that wins. Whether black or white, the one that is led is the one that finds... <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the reason why as God empowers us to travel across the nations, when I meet pastors like the great leaders over Canada here, I am always in a hurry to appreciate them, to salute them, and to let them know that we have only come to lift up the hands of those who are already here. The reason why you are gathered today is because there are others who have labored before we came. Always know that you count. You are here because some prayer warrior somewhere prayed you out of some addiction it is true that you heard joshua selman's message but i was not there listen to my message rise up and walk i teach there that several miracles happened the miracle we know is the miracle of rising up to walk but there were many other miracles the first miracle was that the man found destiny helpers who could carry him daily 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 don't forget the ones who carried him. If they did not carry him, he would not meet Peter and John. And then the miracle of allowing himself to be carried. You see that? So whilst you appreciate Joshua Selman, while you appreciate all of the people who have made this happen, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, make sure you are fair enough to say thank God for me thank God for me when history is written over the sound of revival amazing that your name will be added as those who responded to that clarion call listen to me I want you to stand confident in the fact that you have a role to play in God's prophetic program are you ready for number four 
let's hurry up we have to pray foundational truth number four who is learning already the knowledge of God the knowledge of yourself in light of who Christ is your place in destiny and God's prophetic program are you ready for number four the fourth foundational truth you must know is that you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom if you do not contend to know the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom you cannot walk in the reality of dominion you trade mysteries for dominion you trade mysteries for dominion you exchange mysteries the currency that purchases dominion are currencies of mysteries you trade mysteries to buy dominion job 38 and verse 33 knowest thou the ordinances of heaven he says canst thou establish the dominion thereof on the earth do you know the mysteries by which the heavens regulates itself i wish we could find niv or nlt he says do you know the laws of the heavens and can you establish that dominion using those laws upon the earth thank you do you know the laws of the heavens can you use those laws to set up god's dominion system on earth Do you know why heaven is a place of order? Do you know why there is no lack in heaven? Do you know why sin is judged immediately in heaven? That you can import those mysteries and make it happen within your domain. That's what it means, thy kingdom come. A replica, a replication of heaven's culture, heaven's atmosphere. It says when you pray, pray thus, thy kingdom come in earth, not on earth, in earth. The first earth being you, the earthen vessel let his kingdom let his laws find expression so that your life becomes an expression of heaven on earth who is like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less worth nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. This is the reason why you must make up your mind from this conference that I will be in definite pursuit of knowledge. Do not let a day pass without you listening to a quality message that builds your spirit. There should be a book you are reading, scripture you are learning. Are we together? Don't allow a day pass and then you freelance knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. The mysteries of the kingdom. Favor is not working in my life. I have to learn the dynamics. You get the message, this grace called favor. Don't say I was there when it was preached. Has, it, has favor worked in your life? If your answer is no, get back. And listen again. And listen again. And listen again. I'm tired of being oppressed by demons. Go and get the message, complete deliverance. Part one, two, three. Learn the dynamics for wholesome victory, not temporal victory. That you laugh today and cry tomorrow again. Epileptic victory. You can command dominion once and for all. Are we together? My finances, things are not working well. Get, go and get the teaching I shall not want. Stay there. Understand God's principles. Understand the economic system of the kingdom and know how to engage and rise out of shame and misery hallelujah yes you're being troubled on every side your body wants sickness after the other you are going to be healed but you want your healing to remain you have to go and learn scripture go and learn scripture go and learn scripture go and learn scripture they are life to those who find them 
and health to their flesh. Are we together? Your life is not working. Everything is confused. Go and get the message, the spirit of wisdom. You need to know how to derive profit from scripture. Doth not wisdom cry. Everything is built by wisdom. If your organization is crashing, you need wisdom. Not just information. Knowledge alone does not build. It is wisdom that builds. Are we together? You've lost a lot of things. Opportunities and relationships. Go and get the message on restoration. Know how restoration happens. Our last master for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? And the axe head floated again. Anything lost can be recovered under a certain condition. Is someone learning? Damage ignorance from your life. I'm challenging you, Canada. Damage ignorance from your life. Stop giving flimsy excuses. If it's not working, the bridge between you and result is knowledge, wisdom. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. There's got to be a way out. I don't seem to be growing and rising in influence. I need that kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty. There are principles of influence that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Influence has laws. Do you know the laws? How about longevity? I know I won't die. Don't take that kind of risk with your life. Not in this wicked, bedeviled world. What is the basis of your confidence that you will live long? Not necessarily out of fear. Do you know the laws that govern longevity? Or are you hoping you will live per day? No. The fear of death can go. There is a way that light can come that grants you the confidence. And you... you you believe me, the person talking to you, you don't know how many times death has come around my corridor. But thanks be to God, which causes us always, always, always to triumph. There's been times that sometimes I'm about to take a trip and great friends, prophetic, and sometimes they call me and say, Apostle, are you about to travel? I say, exactly so. I say, please don't travel. We've seen a ghastly motor accident or we've seen this and i appreciate them i know they are not lying but what then is the excellency of dominion the ability to know what satan wants to do and change it is where authority comes you think satan wanted me to arrive here ask him unfortunately he's used to pain from me and it won't end knowledge puts you in a place it sounds like arrogance but is the intoxicating effect of knowledge knowledge that works i found your word and i ate it it became a joy and a rejoicing unto me that the word became sweet like honey are we learning let's finish up number five canada are you learning Number five, the fifth fundamental truth you must know if you want to rise to a point of power, grace, stature, and maturity is that you must understand man hmm, as God's highest creation. You must study this mysterious entity called man. Don't know God alone. You must know the man, the midwife. The one who midwives everything. The arrival of anything on earth is man dependent. We say it back home, all blessings come from God through man to man. All troubles come from Satan through man to man. Doesn't matter where it starts from. It must meet a man to happen. If you know God and you do not know men, surprisingly, Prophecy will hang over your head, but never find expression. God is in this place, but he's moving through men. Did you hear me? God is in this place, but 
the speakings of God is through frail lips of clay. He's chosen to walk with men. He can do without us, but he's chosen to walk with men. Most believers do not understand the value nor the ministry of men. Let me show you a scripture. John chapter 5 and verse 7. The man at Bethesda. That man had been there for 38 years, ladies and gentlemen. And Jesus comes to him and says, would you be made whole? And he, listen to his answer. The important man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man. I know where the solution is, but I have no man. It is a dangerous thing to have no man. Even for kings, it is in the multitude of men that their honor lies. You need to pray for the gift of men. Strategic helpers can show up in your life, your ministry. You are as powerful as the men that have chosen to support you. You are as powerful as the men that have chosen to build a garrison of support around you. And I'm praying for someone, maybe a preacher, maybe a business person, maybe a parent. In the name of Jesus, you will never lack helpers. In the name of Jesus, you will never lack men. I declare that men show up. Some of you before evening, before evening, before the session in the evening, God will raise a man, a destiny helper, a bridge between your yesterday and your tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look at me. David is in the wilderness, Canada. God had spoken that David would be the next king. He's rejected Saul. But David's destiny is being delayed. You know why? Because a man called Samuel refused to go and anoint him. And you would think God would bypass Samuel and go to David. He comes to Samuel and says, how long shall you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul as king, carry this horn and go to the house of Jesse. In other words, David would be having visions. On Tuesday, your breakthrough will come and nothing happens. God had already spoken, but the man who would make it happen do you know men can prolong prophecy? Joseph is in the prison and he pleads with the wine presser. He says, please, when you go to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh I'm innocent. Maybe he will hear you. But the Bible says the man forgot. Ah, your helper forgot. This is why the Bible says there is something called the book of remembrance. Can I speak that over someone? So Mordecai saved the life of Ahasuerus and it was documented. But he was not rewarded. He remained at the gate. And the Bible says that night could not Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And when they opened it, he saw where Mordecai saved his life. And he said, who is at the chamber there? And Haman came. He said, what should be done to this man? Haman thought it was him. And he gave the best description. And he said, without fail, do that for Mordecai. Let me prophesy to someone. Someone you helped who had forgotten you. Someone you prayed over, you agreed with before the arising. In the name of Jesus, may the book of remembrance be open. Be open. Be open. Over your ministry, be open. Over your family, be open. Over your destiny, in the name of Jesus. When Pharaoh had his dream, the wine presser said, Ah, I remember my wrong this day. That means it is wrong to forget those who helped you. I remember my wrong. It was an offense to destiny. I remember my wrong and he told Pharaoh there was such a man and he said go immediately and the Bible says listen not God the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon who sent for him the king don't downplay men and don't say men do not matter you will suffer as if God does not exist the economy of the kingdom works this way 
everything comes from God but it is made manifest through the ministry of men the ministry of men hmm. the ministry of men the ministry of men your finances the ministry of men the building the ministry of men everything that you need men dependent if you know this you will know how to pray I wish I had time my time is up but maybe write this burn it in your mind there are four kinds of men you need to rise number one they are called divine connectors they don't have the ability to help you but they can take you to the person who can help you when you see the slave girl show up in your life don't reject her you may remain a leper forever the slave girl did not have the miracle power to help Naaman but she could recommend and that was how Naaman got healed you will find divine connectors the key to receiving them is humility and discernment because they will come in a form that you may not easily accept divine connectors number two you need men of influence men of influence gatekeepers you have heard me say um, Joseph interpreted three people's dreams the dream of the baker still left him in the prison the dream of the wine presser still left him in the prison but when he interpreted the king's dream it matters whose dream you interpret don't tell me you have the ability to interpret dreams whose dream are you interpreting if you are still interpreting the baker's dream you will still be locked up in prison so when God wants to help you he will make the king have a dream because only the king can make you a prime minister number three you need gifted men gifted men bring efficiency to your life and your destiny if you're a leader here I want you to pray that God would bring gifted men one gifted person one gifted person can equal 30 people in your life and organization it's not enough to have men you need gifted people this conference by the grace of God has been ordained by God but the efficiency has been through the ministry of gifted people workers did I just describe you <laughs> hallelujah number four the final group of men you need are called burden bearers these are a unique set of people they don't move you forward but they stop you from going backward they are the ones who carry the cross you don't see them when you are rejoicing in the palace you don't see them during your triumphant entry you only see them on your way to Golgotha but they are there praying for you they love you beyond the glamour they don't love the man of God they love the man they don't love the CEO they love the man they are the ones who will cry with you and say don't worry the company seems to be folding now and everyone has left but I will be here can I tell you this woe betides a man who invests so much in people and then does not have burden bearers because even if you are Jesus a day will come you will carry the cross and if you do not have a burden bearer at such times history is full of people who spend their lives investing in others but at their dark days everyone left them I'm praying for you may God make you a burden bearer yeah. and then may God bring burden bearers to you yeah. in the name of Jesus write this down as we close the final body of truth the sixth that you must know in order to command dominion you want to rise spiritually you must know your adversary the devil don't ignore men and then don't ignore Satan too we are never taught in scripture to ignore Satan we are taught to command victory the Bible calls him the thief John 10 10 and that he comes to steal to kill and to destroy first Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 he says be sober 8 and 9 be vigilant because your adversary not your friend 
the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour are we learning seeking whom he may devour you must know who satan is and the bible says to not be ignorant of his devices you don't know him to produce fear you know him so that you will see how defeated he has been on account of the victory of christ and then you understand the rules of engagement as far as manifesting that victory is concerned in the name of jesus christ can you imagine i've just given you the second key to growth and maturity everything that we've said is under submitting to the word is this a good menu <laughs> blessed be the name of the lord let me give you the third and fourth the third key to attaining maturity in the spirit in addition to your prayer life and the ministry of the word is corporate fellowship i have to say this because i have something else to teach just lend me two or three more minutes and we're done corporate fellowship the power of the house of god you will never become a matured believer if you ignore the mystery of corporate fellowship i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord are we together corporate fellowship is powerful then i give you number four the fourth and final key i will give you is service kingdom service you want to be a believer that grows into a state of maturity the ministry of prayer alongside with fasting and all the spiritual exercises that come with it number two the ministry of the word and i took time to show you certain foundational truths that you must press for number three corporate fellowship there is something about god that you will never experience in your secret place it is when believers are gathered together the bible says there the lord has commanded the blessing even life forevermore and then number four service service will help you test your knowledge whether it works or not service will prune your appetite it puts you under authority service gives you room to be accredited and to be approved run away from leaders who have never served no every great leader starts as a faithful servant it is service that transits men to leadership if you do not know what it means to serve you can never know what it means to lead hallelujah the bible says fervent in spirit serving the lord thank you for staying to the end of this message i hope you were blessed by the message please share this message with others and also don't forget to make your ways right with jesus it is only Jesus that can save. It's only Jesus that can save and no one else can do it. So if you have not given your life to Jesus, I plead with you that you say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe in you, that you are the Son of God. You died for my sin and you rose up from the dead. And I'm justified because of you. Today, I accept into my heart and I confess you with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life and I believe you with my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I am saved. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations, you are born again. Find a Bible-believing church and begin to attend and fellowship with brethren. And God will continue to uplift and grant you his grace. Thank you. God bless you.